Hello and welcome! If you're new here, my name is Jennifer. If you're not new here, welcome back to my channel. It's been quite a while since I've done one of these, but I'm super excited to get started on this kit. Um, I made this for a family member, so I'm just uh, basically opening this up and seeing what's in here. I've never made this one before, but it looks like it's got a lot of components to it. As you can see, there's a bag of stuff that I pulled out. Here's all the felt that it comes with. Everything is pre-stamped, so all you gotta do is find the number with the piece and um, cut it out and uh, do your embroidery. So that makes it super easy. The instructions are here. And I'd like to take a look at how many steps there are. There's not a lot of steps here. Honestly, if it's less than 100 steps, it's actually a pretty quick stocking to put together so i love the top there but yeah okay so this is a uh, camo santa and it comes with um like poster board and here's the chart that you will refer to often i know i do because this is the first time making this one so lots of different types of stitches and it tells you um, the thread stuff. So we're going to organize that and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I took the liberty of uh, cutting out the first piece and I'm just doing my double knot here for beads and sequins. And I've had a lot of you comment <laughs> that you don't knot the thread as well as I do, but I've done this so many times, uh, it just takes practice. So I'm just going to put a sequin and a bead on here. I come up from the bottom, and I use two strands. I know a lot of people don't, but I just find that using two strands really secures the bead and sequin, and I don't, I don't, I'm not worried about it. I've actually had beads come loose before even when the project's finished. So I like to get it nice and tight. And sometimes if the beads and sequins are far enough apart, I do a little double knot back there. And then I continue on with my work. So we're just gonna follow the dots here. And the reason why I know is because it says on the chart. So as you can see, number two sits up there. Now, um, that is the stocking cuff. We're going to be doing letters on there. I'm going to add the name here. And I've um, gone ahead and written some names, but we're gonna, I'm going to show you um, the name that goes on here. I like to use lined paper, as you can see. And my kid's talking to me. <laughs> um... I use lined paper to keep the letters straight. And uh, because the alphabet is rather small on the paper, I can't trace it. So I'm kind of going off of my eye. So I'm using my eyeballs here. And as you can see, I erase a lot. I did this a lot before I filmed, so. Trying to get it right the first time is not usually how it works. <laughs> usually it takes a couple rounds. And that's okay, but here's my process, so. I am super excited to be making these again. If you've been following along my channel, I've been making um, very few Busilicate videos throughout 2022 because we were building a house. And if you haven't seen that, check those videos out. We are done and moved in and it's been amazing. So notice, okay, real quick, notice how the, the letters are slowly getting bigger? <laughs> I'm trying to keep them all the same. So, so anyway, we finished our house and we're moved in and getting back to these tutorials has been something I've been looking forward to. So if you have any suggestions on kits that you want me to do, let me know. I already have kits that I have 
ready for tutorials that I want to make, but I do want to make stuff that you guys want to watch. So I take your input and I do my best. Also, I um, have been updating my Etsy shop and I've been updating my YouTube stuff. Um, and I've noticed that YouTube suggested I turn on a super thanks. If you guys don't know what that is, it's kind of like if you've ever been to like a live a YouTube, a live YouTube stream, you know how they have like a super chat or whatever. Well, I don't really do streams, but they have an option to do super thanks instead. So if you go, if you're watching it either on your phone or on the computer, just underneath the video where it has um, the like button, it should be right by the like button. It says super thanks. And if you click on that, you can donate to my channel. And I think this is amazing because, again, I don't do live streams and I don't really get a chance to do super chats like the live streamers do. So if you if you want to support my channel, that's a great way to do it. Um, all the funds that I get from YouTube and from Etsy go into my business and they go into paying off debt. So I appreciate any contribution. Because it takes time and money to make these videos, believe it or not. <laughs> if you've ever made videos, you'll understand me. You'll understand why. So if you notice, I'm using... This is actually uh, gift paper. You know the tissue paper you can get to put inside gift bags? Yeah, that's what I use to trace my letters. And I found that this is a very inexpensive option because sometimes tracing paper can be more expensive. So I found that this is a great solution. You don't have to buy tracing paper. You can just grab some tissue paper at your local store. You can get a pack of it for like 99 cents and it'll last you a long time because you only use little, you know, little sections. So it looks like we're gonna be doing the chain stitch for the name. Which is super cool because normally, and I think the most popular stitch to use is the outline stitch, but every once in a while you get something different and I like doing that. And um, the chain stitch is really pretty when you do it right. <laughs> so I'm going to show you how to do it right. <laughs> um, there are several methods to doing the chain stitch. This method is just one of many. So do your own research, find one that works best for you. Um, I might do a mini video on how to do the chain stitch like a better a better way because this 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 stitch um, again, there's different ways to do it. Um, but I think I found a way that I could open it up better because you notice I'm having a hard time keeping the chain open. So I'm gonna do some research and see if I can find a better way to do the chain stitch. Because I really like the look of the chain stitch. So let me try this again. I didn't like the way that looked, so I took it out, started over. Sometimes you just gotta do that, you just gotta start over. Sorry, my project is not in the shot. I'm trying to fix. There we go. <laughs> I was trying to fix my stitch here. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time. See, I've been doing this for, you know, ever, and I still get knots. Or I don't want knots. Is, have this, is, if this has ever happened to you, let me know. <laughs> Comment down below and say, hey, yeah, this has happened to me. There's random knots, you know? In the back of your work. No, the best part is when you discover a knot too late. <laughs> That's the best, isn't it? <laughs> you're in the middle of your project and all of a sudden you're like, why, why is my stitch not laying properly? And then you look at the back of your work and like, you know, a million stitches before that, you have a giant knot in the back. That's always fun, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not... 
I mean, okay, so basically I'm doing the stitch as it, as it says in the instructions. That's the only reason why I'm doing it this way is because you, this is, if this is all you have to go off of, then, you know, that's all you have to go off of. So I may just, you know, make a small video about the chain stitch, a better way to do it. That's more efficient and doesn't, you know, require a lot of thinking. I think that's one reason why the applique stitch, or no, I'm sorry, the outline stitch is used for names because you don't really have to think about it. You just kind of, you know, do your outline stitch because it's an easy stitch to do. But yeah, you can see I'm struggling with that. Darn chain stitch. Okay, trying to get this going. Yeah. All right, well. <laughs> my struggles are real, guys. <laughs> okay, well, I might just continue off camera just so I can finish this name otherwise it's gonna take me eons to finish this oh there's my kid throwing toys at me <laughs> my kids love the camera and sometimes they will sneak my phone and they will take random videos on my phone so whenever they see me pull out my phone and record they're like "Ooh, let me be in the <laughs> recording Okay, so despite my struggles, I managed to finish the and name. Moving on to the blanket stitch on top. It's so convenient that they put these lines up here because if you've ever done the blanket stitch, you understand it is very difficult to keep the stitches the same. Uh, my favorite trick is the finger, like the thumb trick where you put lines on the side of your thumb and line up your stitches with your thumb. I've seen that, it works great. You still have to deal with the lines on your thumb, but this way I don't have to think about it, it's so great. <laughs> and I know that my stitches will be pretty much the same all the way down, so. Another reason why stamped felt is awesome. But this is basically the blanket stitch. And if I wanted to do it again, I might have added, like I might have like done more strands of thread. It only calls for two, which is fine. But um, I mean, the blanket stitch, it looks really good with a thick piece of like, like many, many strands of thread, like a really nice thick line. Maybe they're just going for delicacy here, but I mean... It looks great, but you can still kind of see the black lines. So, but yeah, so yeah, it looks great. Um, I, sh I don't have any complaints, but yeah, if you don't want to see those black lines, you could always take the, the tip of your needle and rub those off. They come off fairly easily. Lots more beads and sequins along the bottom of this cuff. And for... Beads and sequins that are really close together. I like I like to do this this method of kind of like the running stitch with beads in between each stitch, if you see what I mean. So I I just take my needle and I just pop it over to the next one and I do that all the way down. And um, it saves me a lot of time to do that. So I'm gonna do that off camera. Okay, so now that that's finished, I pinned it to the front and we are going to attach the white cuff to the back. We're, we're using white thread. We always want to match the front. I don't, we don't want blue thread because that won't match the front. Even though the piece on the back is blue, we won't see it. So we want to, wa we want to match the color felt on the front so that it blends in very nicely. And this is the whip stitch, also known as the applique stitch. And this stitch is fairly simple. 
yet complicated at the same time <laughs> because it's, it's kind of like the blanket stitch where you want each stitch to have this the equal distance between each other to look really sleek and clean so um, now that you know how to do beads and sequins I went ahead and did this tree and we're gonna attach it and um, I'm gonna stop the video here because it's getting kind of long but uh, stay tuned for the next video I will link it at the end of this video and we will continue on this adorable stocking next time. So make sure that you like this video. And uh, if you are a subscriber, please leave a comment down below. I'd love to say hello. If you haven't su subscribed yet, it's totally free. So, and if you like my content, if you like embroidery, Etsy stuff, I do have an Etsy shop um, or even vlogging. If you like that too, let me know. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.